Hello, welcome back to the channel. So one of the things that I've always wanted to do since I started building the harnesses is to do a detailed install video of putting one of these into a car. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this harness, which is a taped harness uh, instead of a sheathed one, and install it into this car. Um, and in the process, I'm going to try to show the details of how to hook it up to all the different components, the lights and everything. So uh, here we go. Okay, so what we've got here is the uh, complete main harness laid down on the inside of the car. Um, I just wanted to, I wanted to do that to point out a couple of things. So there are actually two pieces to this harness and the easiest way to install this thing is to, to separate them. So if you notice right here is the main piece that goes back to the back of the car. So all that is all the stuff uh, from basically the instruments back. And then um, this piece right here goes just to the front. So you've got your front headlights, turn signals, horn relays, some other stuff up there. And they go into the, the fuse panel together, but they're not connected. So if you can see that one right there separately is separate from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this from the fuse panel and I'm going to only install this part first. And then uh, you can come back and either take the fuse panel off the rear part and put the rear part in, or you could leave the fuse panel on the rear and put it in together. It's, it, that's no big deal. But this just makes it a little bit easier. You're not slapping everything around while you're trying to put it in. You just got the one part to worry about. There's only one issue with that. When the factory made these things and they installed them, and I'm assuming that they did it as a very last thing, so it's really not that big of an issue, but they used a tamper-resistant paint. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the German word for that, but it's a yellow paint that goes on the top of the screws that hold the, the, um, the wires onto the panel. So just wanted to touch base on that, you know, to... To make it all nice and original, you'd want to keep that paint intact, but uh, you could always put the paint on after you put the fuse panel in, which is, I'm, I'm assuming, is what Porsche did. So, so here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off of the fuse panel, and then we'll, we'll put it in. So this is what the front part looks when it's disconnected from the uh, fuse panel. So here's all the wires that went to the fuse panel. You've got a quick connect on your black and this uh, brown with white. They go to your washer pump and to your uh, horn relay, respectively. And then you've got these uh, that go to your Wico connectors that have to do with the lighting system. I'll get into detail with that. This goes to your fuel gauge. Um, and then the rest of it just traces back. I mean, it, it splits, goes to the driver's side headlights, and then goes over to the passenger side headlights so that... And then right here you do have your um, your horn relay and your windshield washer pump stuff. I got a couple grounds in there that ground to the front and go into detail that here in just a few. Um, but that's what it looks like once you've got it disconnected. You can see it becomes a lot, a lot less cumbersome and you got a lot less flopping around, potentially damaging. So um, there we go. So let's start putting it in. So now here it is with uh, just the rear. So you've got just the dash lights that stay with the harness, and then this is the rear part. So, um, yep, so that's what it looks like once you take the front off. Okay, so here it is, uh, just temporarily laid out in here. So it gives you an idea of where it's gonna fall. Um, this is your driver's side, I'm sorry, passenger side. Uh, driver's side's over there and you got your uh, horn relay laying down in here. So you've got that right there. So we'll get all that figured out and how it goes in. One thing I did want to talk about real quick was that the factory used, I don't know if you can see these little things right here, but they have these little um, tabs that hold the harness in the car. So the factory used these. Basically it's just a cut piece of uh, uh, pipe or tubing or sheathing or whatever you want to call it. Looks like it's probably the same sheathing that was used in the wiring harness. Um, but it does give you uh, some insulation against those little prickly things, these little guys right here, because they can. There's a bunch of them. This is the one over here for the uh, battery cable. The battery cable goes up underneath there. Um, but the main harness ran down through here. So I'm not going to be putting these on. I just wanted to talk about them that, you know, um, in a later video, I will. Behind me, there's another car that is a little bit more um, original 
than this one and it still has i actually took this one off of them and or that one over there and, and it has most of them on there so you can get an idea it seems that they didn't use them everywhere um so i'll try to go through and document that where they go so so i've got it ready to go in so one of the things that i do to get these um the parts that go out to the um to the headlights ready to um go up through this little hole here so this little hole is where the harness has to go for the headlights, turn signals, and, and uh, running lights and things like that. So um, you got to get that through the hole. You don't want to tear up your nice new wiring harness. So what I do is I take some industrial wrap. It's basically heavy duty saran wrap. So saran wrap would probably work. And then I take a clear packing tape um, and, and tightly wrap it over the saran wrap. So the reason I do that is that the tape would stick to the other tape potentially and just cause a problem. The saran wrap will come off pretty easily. It won't damage the wires, the labels that are in there. So, and it's also smooth. If you could feel that, you would feel that it's very smooth. So it won't grab and, and stick to stuff. So you just start to feed it up through here. First goes the uh, wire for the uh, fog lamps. Then you want to do it for the passenger side. So I've done the same thing so you can get a little better view of it there. So I've just uh, wrapped it and then I put tape over it. So it, it gives it a little bit uh, less resistance to go through that hole. So here we are on the other side, getting ready to feed it through, um, through the hole down here. Let's get a better view of that hole. This one has some undercoating on it. Um, there's normally um, a little bit of undercoating on those. So okay, so we're starting to get there. This is just a shot of what the harness is starting to look like. So you can see that the terminations are ending up where uh, close to where the um, fuse panel is going to be. And then it comes down through here. You've got your first offshoot, which is going to your gas sending unit. We'll get to that. And then you've got your offshoot for the uh, driver's side headlights and, and signal lights. And then you've got your first ground of the harness up here, which goes to that stud right behind it. And then coming off that, you've got your horn relay and your washer pump stuff. We'll go over that. And then you can see that the harness actually snakes up underneath here and it goes behind the latch housing. So there's the housing for the front latch uh, it goes back in there. So you can see it going back in there. Now these little tabs would have had these pieces that I talked about earlier, would have had these on there. And it continues over here, comes over to this side of the car. Once again, we've got another, let me get this situated. We've got another ground stud right here. Okay, so your harness would go up under there. You, and then the hose, or I'm sorry, <laughs> the, the harness, the hose the harness comes over for this outlet hole so the wires come through here on the harness and they go through the hole right so that comes through the bulkhead and it comes out through here all right so this is a, a an area where you can do a couple of things because right here there's supposed to be a j tube that looks kind of like this okay doesn't kind of look like that that looks exactly like that that goes on there and the harness goes through that tube into the bottom of the headlight bucket. This is an example of the bottom of the headlight bucket. Now this one is wrong for 67 because it has two holes. On the forums there's some really good discussion about how that's supposed to look, but ultimately it's supposed to look like that. It should just have one hole, the big hole, well two holes instead of three. should have the big hole coming up where the main harness comes through and then the one hole where the turn signals and the running lights feed back down away from the connector for the headlight. So as you can see, the harness comes through and into the J-tube, and then the J-tube fits up inside of this um, receptacle on the body of the car. Kind of pushes up in there, and that's what it looks like coming out of the top of the J-tube. And then the bottom of the J tube connects to the bottom of the headlight bucket. There's actually a flexible, uh, it looks kind of looks like a hose. I don't have it, but 
you can get them through the parts houses and um, keeps it allow or allows it to be uh, flexible due to vibration as the harness goes up into the headlight bucket. So, which I'll show here in just a second. So, like I was saying, you would feed it through this hole. Th these would go through this hole. So we will start doing that. You got to feed them individually because uh, the factory didn't put boots on them. Of course, I do, but if you if you want them, but uh, I like the boots just in case you know down the road. Uh, and you would never see them on a factory restoration, but you know if you're uh, that guy that wants to leave them disconnected or leave them disconnected, leave them uh, leave them a bear, that's fine. Obviously, the factory thought it was okay. So you start to feed that down in there like so. It comes up underneath. A little tricky. So it ends up a look in a little something like that to where these stay in the bucket, and then your other wires go down through there. So here's the grommet installed. Some people cut it to get these up in there. It's pretty easy to get the front ones on there. Uh, the back ones are a little bit difficult, so you just have to play with it. So then they feed through here, all right? You gotta do them one at a time. Feed that one through, and then where'd that other one go? And you feed that one through. Sorry for my hand in the way. There you go, okay comes through like so oh, right through there and then you would push your grommet through which is a little tricky especially because the fender's moving on me but you get the idea come on Bessie get up in there you could probably do it different ways you could probably put the grommet in first and then feed them through that's up to you almost there Or maybe use a little pick or something. But there you go. So you see the grommet goes through there. And then you've got enough to, to play with here if you need to bring it through like that. And your horn um, ends up hanging down. So your horn ends up connecting up in here to the, uh, to the J. That's where I've always seen them. They're up on the J uh, tube. So... So then you would connect your lights in. So we'll do that here in a few minutes. We'll get a headlight, or I'm sorry, a combination marker light, turn signal, and a headlight, and we'll show you how to do it. So starting to hook this stuff up. So the first thing I wanted to start with was the headlights. Um, so this is the headlight connector. If you look on there, there is some very small numbers. Let me see if you can, if we can get focused on that. Um, so there's a 31, a 56A, and a 56B. So the way this works is these are spring-loaded, so you push them in, and the, it opens up the connector so that you can put the wire in there. So the first one we're going to do is the 31, which is the ground wire. So we're going to push 31 open, push it up like so, and then slide it in, and then let go. So there you go. Then the next one is 56A, which is the white so we'll push that one in. It's a little tricky. You gotta almost have three hands. This thing doesn't want to go in very nice easily. There you go. And then the last one is this one. Is the 56A or B, I'm sorry. There you go. So that's how the headlight is wired up, and then that would connect into the back of the bulb. The next thing I want to show is the passenger side um, light assembly. So you've got your turn signals in there, and you've got your running signals or running lights, and you've got a ground. So the ground is very simple. It goes here in the center, like so. All right, turn signal is on the outside and it goes on here like so. And then the other one for your running lights goes on like so. There you go. 
And then that goes up in there. Next we have the horn and the, the um, fog light line, wire, whatever you want to call it. So it's a one wire, it's a white with a green. It's that one right there. Uh, it would run up to the fog lights if you so had them up in the bumper housing um, or some people have them up in the, um, the vents there by the, the lights. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. It's a single wire that goes into that. But then the horn, it's got, um, this is same from side to side, by the way. So there's a ground right here, and then there's a black with a yellow. So what I have here is a horn that came off of another car, and somebody has gone in and, and put a ground wire onto this bracket. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not really up on the horns. I know there's a few different styles. I don't think this was original, but there's a bracket that went in here that um, helps clamp this down onto the tube as it comes out of the, the body. So it would go right here, right? And, or like that. And there's a bolt there that the horn would hang off of. So it would sit up in here. But basically what you've got here is you've got the ground to the ground, and then you've got the, the, uh, the, the black with yellow to the, the power. So that's the way the horn goes on. Both sides are the same. For the driver's side, <clears throat> you've got the same setup for the headlights. It's the exact same lettering and numbering for the uh, the pins on the uh, or the clamps on the, the bracket. So that's pretty straightforward. Just go back and take a look at what was just shown. And then same for the horn. The horn is identical. It's got a black with a yellow and it's got a ground. And then the wire for the um, fog light is the same. So white with green. So what's different are the lights. So not that different, but they are different. So the, the ground, of course, goes back into the middle. All right. So then you got the black with the white, which is a turn signal, which on this one should be this one right here. Got to take a look. So it's going to be the outer one, right? And it's going to go right there. Get it up on there. There we go. And then the black with the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the gray with the black is going to be the running lights. So just slip it up on there. So there you go. So that's why it would go into the fender like that. Now we come over to where the uh, horn relay and the washer pump uh, connect. So you've got a brown with a black to go for the washer pump, so we'll do that one first. So this is what the washer pump looks like, and I don't know if you can see on that, but there is a negative and a positive. So pretty straightforward. The negative is the brown. It goes to this one. And then the black is the positive. Like so. And then that little guy is going to sit up in here on its little stand like that. Of course, there's a way that it anchors down, and I'm not going to do that, but you get the idea. It goes up in there. And then what's left over is for the horn relay. So you've got a large red gauge wire that has a piggy tail coming off of it, two black with yellows, and a brown with a white. So this is what the relay looks like. It's an unrestored version, obviously, but it'll work for what we're doing. So it's got on the back number 87, and then this one, which is joined together. So it's really two connections for the same thing. So it's 30 slash 51, and then you've got number 85, and then you've got number 86. So 85, 86, okay? So the red goes to 87, the big red. The pigtail goes to number 86. Okay, so right here, like so. The black with the yellows are easy. They go to the 30 slash 51, one to each correspondingly. And then the last one, the brown with the white, goes to number 85. So that's what it ends up looking like. I don't know if you can, but you can, yeah, you can see it. 
and then it's going to connect. It's got up in here, let's get this guy out of the way. There's two little holes here and here that this would screw into. So it would go up in so like, like so. Like that. All right, and then you have a ground over here too. It's very similar to the one on the other side. It would go into the stud right here. So you would take the stuff off. Goes on the stud, put your washer back on, and then the nut would go back on the top of it, like so. While this car is not ready to be restored, you get the idea. So that's our, that area. Then this wire right here, it actually connects to the uh, positive battery terminal, so that's what that's for. So the next thing I wanted to show was the uh, fuel tank sending unit connector. So this is what it looks like, okay? And that's the top of what your sending unit will look like. If you notice, there's four, uh, uh, four pieces sticking up. Three of them are electrical connections and one of them is a locator. So on the back of the uh, little connector, there's a notch right there. And then you've got three electrical connections inside of it. So it would go on like this. That dowel would go, or that locating dowel would go into the top of it to just slide down in there like so. And then of course that would be in your gas tank. There you go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to feed the, um, the rear harness in, also with the lights and the dash stuff over here. But uh, what you do is you wanna to get to the very end of it. And so start feeding it through. So you got three holes over here, right? You got the first one, which is for the harness, and then these two are free for the uh, fuel vent that would come up into here. Um, there is a grommet that goes on here. I don't have the grommet on here. It, if the grommet was on here, it'd be a little tough to get this harness through. You might be able to do it. I haven't tried. Uh, I would recommend probably cutting the grommet. Um, you wouldn't see the cut once you got it in, uh, especially if you put the cut underneath the harness. So. Um, this is going to feed it down into the passenger compartment. So we're just going to start feeding it down, down through. where you start to come to, um, you know, it, it gets a little tricky here. And this is where if you had the grommet in there, it would be a little tough. This is your brake light switch wires. And then you've got your relays, the three relays that sit up underneath the dash. But you got to feed up in there. So start to feed them. Do it a little farther. install start to poke her just a little bit. And get her about where she wants to go. Okay. So let's see. That's looking pretty good. So we're gonna leave that loose. And uh, that's pretty much the first step. So now you have the harness piled up into the passenger compartment. So let's take a look at that. You can start to see uh, the harness just kind of laid out on the inside of the car. Um, it comes through 
up here. I've got the couple of relays in there already, uh, kind of just hanging there. So that's what uh, you're looking at once it comes through the, the bulkhead. It'll end up going through, through these connectors here, these little tie downs. It's gonna go through this hole. It's gonna come over here and then up in here, on up in there and I'll try to get a picture of it. There's a sub tube that the harness rides in. So it goes all the way down that sub tube all the way to the back. That's where that wrapping comes in critical. Um, that's what it's going to help you. So, because if you have a lot of little pieces flopping around, it's going to be really difficult to get it back up in there. So the first one we're going to do is this one, which is number 43 on the wiring harness. And if I remember correctly, they call it the relay for light signal. Um, so it's gray. That's what it looks like. So that's what the underside looks like. I don't know if you can see those numbers. Okay. So we've got a 56B and a 56A. So 56B, 56A, and then a 30 dash, or I'm sorry, 30 slash 56 right there. A 57 and a 31. Okay, so the 31 is actually a ground. It gets a little, little tiny sub wire and the wire actually grounds up underneath that screw. So we'll go ahead and put that one on. All right, so it goes like so. And then you come over and grab these. Um, let's get these situated. Let's get these coming up through here. And that one coming up through here. All right, so the first one we're gonna do is this white one. It goes to 30 dash fi or slash 56. So that's that one right there. All right, and then you got the white with the green and it goes to number 57, right yonder. Then you've got the, you know, a little messed up here. Let's get that brown out of here. And then you've got the yellow and it goes to number 56B. Okay, 56B at the top there. And then the last one, my default, would go here. All right, so this is what this bad boy is gonna look like. So it's gonna go up in here like so. Hook it up there. Hook it up there. And then that ground wire is going to go underneath that screw. So I'm not gonna do it, but you get the idea. That's what it would look like. So the next one is the yellow one. Uh, it's number 46 on the harness diagram and it's, uh, what do they call it? I think it's control light relay. Yes, control light relay or hazard relay. Um, so that's what it looks like. On the back side, you've got 87 um, A and 30 slash 51 and then 86 and 85 again. Oh, my eyesight's getting so bad, it's hard to see, but uh, there's 85 and there's 86, okay? So this one's pretty straightforward. If you can hang on to the relay. So you've got number 86 and it goes, like I said, on the bottom. Okay, and then you've got number 30. And then it goes here. And then you've got number 87A. And it goes over here. Okay, and then by default, that one goes there. All right. <coughs> so I'm going to Pull that one down and we'll get these up in here. So I'm going to slide this one up in here. Like so slide it down like that. And then we're going to slide this one up under there. And it goes under like that. And then your ground, like I said, would go underneath that screw right there. So you would take that screw out and put the ground underneath there. So the last one is this guy, number 45 on the wiring diagram, uh, the control light relay for the hazards. As I said, it's got an unusual bracket that 
hooks it up in here so you can put it you know anywhere in this two or three inch span on the back it's a little unusual compared to the other ones it's got an r an s an l and a 30. i don't know if you can see that but they are on there so the green with the white goes to the 30. all right get up on there and then the the black with green goes to the r up here all right and then the black with white two wires go to the L which is over here all right and then the last one we'll just snake that back through there goes to the S like so and then you would loop that back up there most of these have these kind of twisted around in there and I mean it doesn't really matter it's going to be it's going to be covered by the um, the panel that goes for the floorboard or I'm sorry for the uh, there's a wood panel that goes there for the kick panel uh, it hooks onto these things and goes up underneath the gas pedal so there you go there's the relays and then we have the brake light switch part um, it goes to let me fix this adjust this so you can see this it goes down here to this hole. So this is for the master cylinder to come through. So on the opposite or back in here, you would have the brake light switch. So it's two black with yellows and they just would feed right through here. And there's a boot that they go into that connects to the brake light switch. So uh, you can't obviously have the boot hooked up to this thing while you're feeding these through there because they would never fit. So you'd want to feed them through that hole and then the brake light switch. There's also a grommet that would go in here to uh, seal that off. So the next thing we're gonna start to do is we're going to start to feed the harness into the back of the car. Uh, it goes through that hole right there. Uh, let me get that angle from the camera there. So it goes through that hole and it goes up through the tunnel, all right? So I'm gonna go up underneath the tunnel and show you where it goes. It gets a little dark for a second but I'm going to get this situated, get a light behind it. And you will see, there we go. See that little hole right there? Right there. That is where the harness is going to attempt to run. Yeah. So here's what's gonna happen. The harness right here is going to go through that hole. It's gonna go through here. It's gonna go up into the tunnel and the sub tunnel that I showed you. And it's gonna come all the way down through here. So there's for your shifter, there's for your brake, um, your parking brake. And then there's a the little access tunnel. And then it's gonna go through one of those holes right there. So the opposite end of that tent, that second channel ends right about here uh, if i remember correctly i think it's yeah it's somewhere in here it ends right about in here so just want to let you know that uh this car is on a rotisserie so i'm actually standing up inside of it um to do this part if if you didn't have it on a rotisserie you would just have to get in the lay in here and, and it really would help you if you had two people one guy back here at the back pulling and one guy up here at the front pushing so we're gonna go through the front hole up here, not this one, but the one all the way at the front and feed it through that little sub-channel that I showed you. Here we are on the opposite end of the tunnel and you can just see it starting to poke through. See as I push it, see the wires coming through. So that's what we're gonna have to So that's what we're going to have to feed it through. <clears throat> and uh, you just got to get it through there. That's where the wrapping of it becomes important to be able to get it through here. If you can get it through here, then you're home free from there. From For the rest of the car, it's not that bad. So, Okay, so the first thing that you have to run on the harness as it's coming through the tunnel is the parking brake light switch. So it goes through this little hole right here. And if you can see in the body, 
there's a uh, indention for it and then it would go up to your parking brake that would sit right in here um move that a little bit there we go and uh so it's a pretty simple straightforward connection i'm not going to show the parking brake but it just has one little spade connector on it so just want to run it up through here like so you're said and done connect into the into the parking brake so. There you go, it's through. Let's go look at it from the other side. So you can see it coming through now. Uh, for some reason there's a brake line on this car. I think it literally is the only part remaining on this car. But hey, um, so we'll do some, some uh, work with that. Show you how it gets routed here in a second. Okay, the next thing that needs to happen is that you've got to feed this secondary sheathing onto the harness. What I do is I put a little baby powder up in there to make it slide easier on the harness. Otherwise, it just grips it too much and it's too hard to pull through. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now the next thing we'll do is get the harness into its position and, and then we'll attach this outward sheathing to this outlet tube. Okay, now that we've got that up on there, we want to get this sheathing, this outer protective coating up on that outlet. It's a stretch fit, so you gotta be kinda careful. And I use a little pick, get up under there and kinda lift it up on there. Once you get it up on there, it's a stretch fit. Just gonna wiggle it up in there. go so there you go you see it has a little bit of a lip from where the tube coming out pushes it out you could put a zip tie around that if you wanted to um, I don't think I've never seen one with a zip tie on it but you could so so that's how that looks okay now the second part of the secondary sheathing gets installed uh, this is cut uh, because what's going to happen here is you're going to have this come out, right? So this is for your starter. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip back so you also have your backup lights come out of there, so. Okay, so you have a couple of things that are going on here. You've got your starter cable coming out, and you've got your backup lights coming out, and then you've got your green with red coming out. So those need to come out right there. So the other one goes up on there with those exposed. Once again, baby powder is your friend here. I don't know if you can hear that squeaking. Okay. And then you have it exiting like so. And you would come back and you would tape that. You'd put some tape around there, uh, some maybe some self-fusing tape. Um, keep it watertight and uh, those would come out for your starter. Okay, now that we've got this all secondary like sheet, we'll start to put it up in here. 
clamp it down. Comes up through here. Like so. This exit is for the starter. Going to the starter uh, backup lights. And this is going to end up going up into the engine compartment. Okay, this will. Snake it up through there. And then this gets snaked up through here. You get the crimp, crimp down. Goes all the way down through there. And then you would tape it off down here. Bring that down a little bit. Down here to make it a seal, a tight seal around the harness. Like so. You tape that off. And then that's going to go up through here. Okay, now we're going to start feeding it up into the engine compartment. So it just goes through this little gap over here, back up in there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a gap there. And it goes up in there. so all nice and snug up in there this uh, this is where it gets routed up through here and then it comes down through here like so and then down along the frame rail here okay that would go to ground there and then this goes to the um, license plate lights, so it has a connector that comes in from the, uh, the license plate lights. And then this would just come along in here, and you, you're, you would have your voltage regulators and your control panel on the 911 up in here. Um, so there's a few, few different things, depending on the model, so we'll go over that later. So that's that. So you've got your blue with your yellow and your large black and then your um, hot wire for your coil and your tack. And we'll show how that connects here in a little while. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the lights. Or I'm sorry, the tail lights. We'll do that next. Okay, now we wanna feed the, um, the driver's side part of the harness through this hole right here. Now, once again, this is a hole that needs to have a grommet going through it. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can feed the grommet through the wires first. It's a little tough. Like I said, in this one, I have the boots on them. Uh, you don't have to put, the, the factory did not put the boots on these, on the back or not on the front. Um, maybe they did that because it's, Easier to get the stuff through here without the boots on it. I don't know, but I, I like the boots, but it does make it a little bit tougher. Um, but let me show you. We can get them up in there. Okay, that's what they look like once you get them through. So then you just start to feed them through this hole. Once again, baby powder would help on this. I didn't put any on there, but it's a little, uh, makes it a little bit more ready to slide up there. Just work it up in there then i'll show the rest in a few minutes of how it connects to the rear lights okay and then the rear part just comes up through here 
comes along underneath these tabs. And just put them up in there, push them over. Okay, and then on the passenger side, we have this hole, and it goes, they go up in there. And I went ahead and put my grommet on, so you just start to feed them up in there. sending unit the oil level sending unit uh, which is only on a 911 so it's a black I'm sorry it's a brown and then a green with a white wire so and it would connect to the oil sending unit now on a 912 that is just that wire is just looped back inside of the harness and it would actually go back over towards the the uh, engine latch and it just hides back up underneath there so you would loop it down in with the harness and get it back out of the way so and it would just sit back up in there that's the way porsche did it when it's not in use you could maybe put a little piece of tape right there hold it in there uh, but if you do have a 911 it would go to your oil sending unit so the harness comes out this is the uh, driver's side so the harness will come out and it'll you want it to uh, feed through this hole right here so this is the hole that the harness is going to come through. Once again, you'd want to have a grommet on there. You'd have it up in there. Um, you could put it in there first or put it in on the, uh, the harness. I'm not going to do either, but you get the idea. This is mainly for the connection now. So we're going to put these up through here. through. So I'll pull them up in there. Give you enough to get the tail line connected. There you go. Okay. Okay, now we're going to connect the uh, the driver's side tail light. So the uh, first thing that you want to do is take the gray with the black and connect it on here. Okay, the one that has the two connectors on it and then you're going to want to take your black with your yellow and connect it to the other side okay like so then you're going to want to take your uh, gray with brown for your backup lights and connect it here there now your ground is going to go up on here there's a ground connection right there okay so we can bring it up under here oh, I think we can so it's going to connect there all right and then the last one is going to be your black with white for your turn signal okay and there you go that's what it's going to look like and then of course she is going to go right in here like so bada boom, bada bang. all right that's the driver's side okay now we're over on the uh the um, passenger side 
So this time I'm going to hook up the ground to the first, or first, just a little easier to see it. So there's a ground right there, very similar to on the other side. So your ground would go there. Okay. And then your uh, gray with your red would go out here. Come here, gray with red, get up on there. Okay. All right. So, and then you have your, uh, your black with yellow for brake lines. So you go up on there like so. Like I said, with the boots on there, it's a little bit of a tight fit. Boots may be overkill, but I do like them. I just like to have my wire, my connectors protected. You know, it can't hurt. So, and then the, uh, then you're going to have your, your gray with your brown for your backup lights. Okay. And then last but not least, your turn signal. Three route that wire a little bit down, down through here. Sometimes you gotta finagle the wires a little bit, make them run a little cleaner. So, there you go. So, that's the way she would she look. So, for engine bay wiring, we want to start off with the uh, early 911 um, relay panel. So this is obviously an unrestored version, but you'll get the idea, and I don't have it attached. But the large black that comes in co connects to this very first uh, uh, connector on the isolator. So you would just screw that in. Um, and then the next thing we'll talk about are the, the blue and then the uh, yellow. So the yellow goes to number 86 on the relay right here, goes, which is this very first one. So it goes right there. And then the blue, uh, once you have your alternator harness plugged in, there's a plug that goes into the voltage regulator and there's a small blue pigtail that would come off <clears throat> and this would connect into that. Um, there's a really, really good video on Mike's restoration page where he's restoring a 67 911 or 67S 911. And he shows all this in great detail. After reaching out to him, he's allowed me to embed uh, down in the com or uh, down in the description a link to his uh, video so i highly recommend you take a look at that because he's done a very very good job of explaining everything so but that's where the blue goes up to the voltage regulator and then the yellow would connect to number 86 on the relay right there then on this one you've got the two wires here one is the red and one is the black with violet so the black with violet is for your tack and it goes to the negative side of the coil so it'd go to this side over here um, so it would connect into there and then the red here. Let me go ahead and get this out of the way The red one here well actually I can't get it out of the way because we've got to connect to the Wico connector So the red would connect into the Wico connector here So it would go up in there and it connect and it gets power over to the voltage regular or to the uh, resistor and then to the fuel pump so but like I said, take a look at that video. There's also, I'm going to put a link to a description of all this in one of the forums. I think it's the early 911S registry. So there's some really good write-ups on this stuff, uh, but the links will be down below in the description. Now we have an original 912 uh, regulator, and it's uh, pretty easy to hook up. So on the 912, the yellow doesn't get used. It just kind of hangs there, just hangs out in space, hangs out by the regulator. But the blue connects up under here, right there, like so. And then the black, the big black, would come in and connect up here at the top. So it would connect into the top there. And that's pretty straightforward on a 912. So much more uh, simplified version. So that's that. And then for the, the tack and the coil, pretty straightforward. The red goes to the positive side of the coil. And then the uh, black with the violet 
for the tack goes to the negative side of the coil. Then you have these two wires. Uh, one is a solid green, and then the other is a green with a black. The green is only used on 68 and up uh, sportomatic cars. So uh, Porsche included it in the harness early. Uh, so if you got a 66, 65, 67, uh, you're not going to have the option of a Sportomatic, so that's what that wire is there for. So it's uh, not used on those earlier cars. And then the uh, green with the black goes to the oil temperature transmitter, the oil temperature sending unit. And then you have the green with the red wire. This is the wire that came out near the uh, wires for the starter and for the backup lights. Uh, it is for the oil pressure transmitter or oil pressure sending unit. So coming out right here, you have your starter wires. So these two guys. And then you also have your backup lights. The backup lights go into a little boot um, that obviously you would have to put on at this point. And then they plug into the switch. These two little guys just plug into the switch. So I want to talk a little bit about the wires that are at the front of the harness that uh, go for the dash and a few other items. Um, I do have, I, I'll include at the very end of the video some uh, reference material for the gauges because there are different gauges and they get a little bit involved. There's the 3 gauge, there's a 5 gauge, and then on the 5 gauge you could have a 912, but you might have a 911, so the gauges are different. Uh, it's not very complicated, but they are different. And it's easier. I have I've done up some pictures that talk about the different connections for them. So I'll post that at the very end of the video. But I did want to talk about a few things. So the first thing, at the very end of the harness in the front of the car, there's this wire right here. It's a it's a ground wire. It's brown, and it goes over to the door switch. So it feeds back up through here, um, going up towards the door, and it would plug into the little. The, the crush switch, whatever you want to call it, the, that makes contact when the door opens and turns the interior lights on. So that's what that is. And then you've got uh, this wire, which is a white with a black. Now, I do want to talk about this one because on every harness or every diagram that I've ever seen, this is shown as a black with a white. But I have yet to see a black with a white in this position. They've always been white with black. So that's one thing I want to point out. But this little guy goes to the uh, the trunk lights, so it would, it would plug into the pigtail that comes down that powers the, the trunk lights. And then these two guys right here are the power to the interior lights, and that pigtail would run down through the pillar. It comes down through the pillar, comes out here, and it would plug into this one with the black, which is the power to it, and then this is the ground for it. And once again, on the driver's side, there's a ground, uh, single ground wire that would go through uh, the holes, one of the holes over here to go up to the door for your door light switch to turn on the interior lights. One other detail up under the dash is this little grounding point right here. There's a ground that comes off of the harness that goes onto that stud like so. We go in that. Also on that stud, is the harness that grounds the gauges. So it's a little brown harness, sub harness. Back up. So it's a little sub harness that uh, you get an idea what it looks like. It goes on that stud also. So it would go up and like so. And then there's a 13 millimeter. 13 millimeter nut that would go on that stud right there and tighten all that down so your gauges are grounded and your harness is grounded up front. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the fog light circuit on this car. Uh, so plugging in the relay, this is uh, obviously an unrestored version, but it's a pretty straightforward relay. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there are numbers under there again. This is 87A. That's 30 that slash 51, uh, 85, and then number 86. So you've got four wires that uh, go to that relay. Pretty straightforward. You got number 85, which is your ground. So it's going to go here. And 
Then you've got number 86, like so. Then you got number 30, slash 51, like so. And then by default, the white with yellow goes over here. So you're gonna end up looking like that. And then that little guy sits right back up in there. There's two holes right here. I don't know if you can see them or not, but there's two holes. And it's gonna go like that. The screws actually come from inside on the uh, passenger compartment, so they would screw up from, from below. Okay, now I wanna talk about the through body connectors. Um, there's a little clip that goes underneath the, the connector that makes it pop into the corresponding hole on the body and there's little tabs that hang out so I highly recommend that this is the way that you do it you would take your connector from the opposite from inside the car and you would connect it to the connector out here like so get it up in there and get it all seated and everything and then push it down there in there as a unit because what happens is if you were to go ahead and install this by itself and then try to come from the back side and connect the connector in you very well could damage those little tabs. So make the connection in the body or in the trunk, like I said, with this coming through and connect it and then push it together as an assembly until the, the connector clicks and you're good to go. So the other connectors have their split like so. So there's two of them, but they connect basically the same. There's identifying marks on them that will keep you from putting them on wrong if you can see Right here, there's a little tab, and then on this one it has the corresponding female part. So you would just slide them down in there and connect them into the connector, and then push the connector in until it clicks. And then we have the two Wico connectors by the fuse panel. So if you did disconnect your front harness from the rear harness to do the install like I've shown in this video, then you'll have to reconnect these to the front part of the harness. It's pretty straightforward. If you notice on this one, there are four black wires, but three of them have a white tracer and one has a green. And then the opposite over here, uh, once again, four black wires, but three of them have a green tracer and only one has a white. So what you'd want to do is take the ones coming from the front harness. So you've got a black with a white and a black with a green. And you want to take the black with the white and you want to attach it to the one that has the three black with whites. So you'd slide it up in so like so, and then you would do your green on the la on the other one. So you would have those connected and that'll tie all that in together. Also, if you disconnected the front harness from the rear harness in the installation, as I showed in this video, you'll have two more things that need to be connected. One is a black wire that goes up to your windshield washer pump. And then the other one will be the uh, brown with white that goes to your horn relay. So you'll have the corresponding connector and you just want to connect them together like so. And then you would take the black and do the same. So um, it's right here. You just want to connect those together so that completes that circuit. The fuse side of the fuse panel has three wires that connect to it that are associated with the front. Well, and one that I'm going to connect that is associated with the main harness that, hadn't, that I had disconnected, so I'll explain that. But the large black that comes from the battery goes to number three. And then, let's go ahead and tighten that down. And then the black, or the, the red, I'm sorry, the red that comes from the um, headlight relay and then also the green with white go into number four. So you want to put those up in there like so and tighten them down. So and that's that for the fused side of the panel. This side, uh, I will say something about this green with white. The green with white goes to oh, the one of the relays up under the dash. Uh, it's for the hazard light circuit. And for some reason, Porsche decided to do it this way. They ran the green off of the fused side, and then they added a, an inline fuse. 
so it gives it a, a protection so that it won't burn up that relay but um not quite sure why they did it i have seen some people hook this green over on the fuse side over here but uh it goes just as cleanly and this is the way it's shown on the wiring diagram it's going into number four on the on the, the uh the unfused side so then we move to the fused side of the panel and the first one that's going to need attention is number five you've got the two white with greens coming for the fog lights Slide them up in like so and tighten it down. Next you have the two gray with red. They go into number seven. So. Then going to number eight, you have a gray with black, two of them. And then we do the headlights. So those are the uh, yellow with the white. Uh, they're pretty straightforward. I do label them though, just to keep them straight because uh, there's a left and a right. Uh, so the first yellow goes to fuse number nine. Then we're looking for fuse number 10. With that second yellow. And then you're looking for fuse 11 on the white. It joins with the white with the blue. The white with the blue is your high beam indicator. So number 10 goes in so with the blue. So, and then the last one is number 12. The white to number 12. Just to break that out, so the white number 12 is your passenger's uh, headlight. And then your number 11 is your driver's side headlight for your white. And then number 10 is for your uh, uh, driver's side. And number 9 is for your passenger side on the yellow. So. These wires go for the turn signal flasher. Uh, I want to say a few things about those. Uh, there's three wires. There's a red and then there's a black with a white. I'm sorry, a black with a white and a green. And then a green with a white. So they go into this guy right here. This is an example of an original one. I want to say a few things about that. This there's a um, there's a stand that goes on here, mounts into the car like that. There's a screw that comes from the passenger compartment that holds that on. So it goes through this hole right here on this car. There's two holes, but it's this one on the right. On my other '67, it only has one hole, and it's it lines up to right there. So that would mount there. the The wires would come up underneath it through this little gap. And then they would come through here and then this mounts on top of it it's got a notch on it to where it lines up so that it can only go on there one way but then i wanted to talk about this thing so on this right here you've got three sets of numbers you got a 54l a k and a p and then a 150 ben x and then on this you've got on the back side a uh, 56a a 56b and a 31 well, the weird thing is, is that the factory harness, none of those numbers make any sense. The factory harness, it calls for a 59A, or I'm sorry, a 49A, a 49, and a K. And then, to make matters worse, if you look at the bottom of the cans, this is an original one, this is an aftermarket one. Neither of these have the referencing numbers that correspond to the wiring harness. 
So my recommendation would be to look at your original harness and see how they orientate into this bracket, okay? So now how do you put them onto the wires? So here's what the bracket on the inside of this little connector looks like. They, they're a pressure fit. You wanna make sure that that round part right there is tight enough to where it squeezes down onto this little bullet connector. Okay, so you would just take it out, make sure it's a nice snug fit here at click. And then you would take your connector, and it is a pressure fit up in there. Push it up in there, and then you're, you're ready to go. But make sure that that expanding part in there has not expanded out too far so it doesn't grab that bullet connector. Um, so I would recommend taking out the connector from the housing, crimp it down a little bit, just not, not just a little bit to make it snug under the bullet connector, put it on the bullet connector, then install it in that but double check your original harness for the orientation of those three wires. Early on in this video, I spoke about um, that Porsche used a tamper resistant paint uh, in the process when they it secured the harness into the car. Um, so here's what I use. There's a German version of it, but what I use is the French stuff. It's a little bit easier to get in the United States. Uh, the German stuff is just, it's a little bit more difficult, uh, but it's pretty simple to use. You can see I've put some right here. Okay, and all it does is just, once you've torqued it down and you've got it tight to where uh, it's supposed to be, you would take the, the tube of paint, which has a very long schnoz on it, and you just touch it on there like so. And you could take a little paintbrush if you wanted to. And put you a little on there. A little dab will do you, as I used to say. And uh, just kind of make it look good. Pretty straightforward. That'll dry and uh, it'll complete the seal. And it'll tell anybody that's looking at this that it has been properly sealed and tightened. And then it's good to go. Whoops. That didn't look too good.